course we are looking at how to construct box plots from a set of data but these are box plots which which includes outliers now how do we show outliers on a box plot they're going to be shown um, as dots at the position of the outlier okay so they're not a part of the main part of the box plot and the whisker they're going to be out on their own as dots let's have a look now, just to remind yourself, an outlier, you think of an outlier as data points that are outside the fences. Now, fences are a number that we work out with a formula. And any data point that's greater than this number or less than this number are outside the fence and therefore are considered outliers. And there are two types of fences, an upper fence given by that formula, Q3. Now, Q3 is your third quartile. That's this one right here, your upper quartile. Your Q3 plus 1.5 times the IQR. Do you remember what IQR stands for? It's your interquartile range. And, of course, we've got our lower fence, which is Q1 minus 1.5 times the IQR. That's your first quartile. Okay, and your interquartile range is an important part that we have to work out. That is the difference between Q3, third quarter, subtract the first quarter. All right, let's look at an example. But before we do, we have to do one more thing um, when we find our outlier these points, that the or original maximum point may have been this one. But when we recognize, well, actually, that's too big of a maximum point, much, much too big. So that point is an outlier. And maybe this point here is also an outlier. So the next point that is inside the set of data, okay, it's the first highest data value inside of the fence that becomes our new maximum and we show that as with the whisker as the top part of our box plot so let's see uh, those ideas in an example we have the following table um, is given the mass scores of 10 friends okay so we can see we've got percentage grades, 46, 29, 35. Ooh, a lot of high grades there. There's one high grade, 93. Okay. And some others. So how are we going to uh, sort out this data and represent it graphically as a box plot? So the first thing we have to do is organize the data. And we're going to do that by writing it in ascending order. So... As we go from smallest to largest, we cross off the data that we've written down so we're not doubling up or missing out on any data points. So there it is, smallest to largest. That's called ascending order. Okay. Next step. Step two is to find the five number summary. Now, it has five numbers and they are your minimum your lower quartile, your median, your upper quartile, and your maximum. So, the first one, minimum, that's easy to find, 29, that's the, the most smallest data point. And then the maximum, here, we have it at 93. And then the median data point. Now, the median data point, um, we're going to identify by finding whereabouts is the middle. I'd say about here might be the middle of the data set. So one thing I can do, I can count all the data points. Ten. Ten data points. Halfway is five. So the fifth data point, one, two, three, four, five, uh, that's that one. So in between the fifth and the sixth, that's definitely the middle. So that position right there, halfway, is the median but I haven't selected a number. I don't know what that is. What's halfway between 38 and 44? 
I can work it out like this. 38 plus 44, and then we divide by 2. That gives you 82 divide 2, which is 41. 41 is halfway between 38 and 44, so that's your median. All right, everyone get that? What, what is missing? We haven't found our lower quartile and our upper quartile yet. Okay, your Q1 and your Q3. So, finding that lower quartile, we look at the lower half of the data set, and we find the number that's exactly halfway, 35. What do you think would be the number for your upper quartile? You're looking at the upper half of the data. Should be 46. All right, let's put them in. Good. So we're almost there. We've got our five numbers. What do you think would be the next part? Well, we're ready to find our outliers. So step three is to determine the fences, the upper fence and the lower fence. So I'm going to put in my rules and let's use those formula to work out the number, which is the position of the fence and any value, data point value that is outside these number, this fence number, then they're going to be declared as outliers. So for the first one, okay, uh, the rule needs us to work out what the IQR is. Now the IQR, remember from the first page, is your interquartile range, your Q3 minus Q1. So that part's very important. Let's get that first. 46 minus 35 gives you 11. Okay, so let's use that value. There it is. Q3, which is 46, and we add 1.5 times 11. And that gives you, on a calculator, you can check it yourself, 62.5. Okay, and the lower fence. 35 minus 1.5 times 11 equals 18.5. Okay. So the lower fence number, well, 18.5 is a lot lower than 29. So it is so low that it holds all the data points. Okay. There's nothing outside of that lower fence. But what about that upper fence, 62.5? 62.5 is right there. Okay. So the number on the outside of that fence, of that upper fence, which is our 93, which was a pretty big result compared to the others, that is the outlier. And it does not belong. It doesn't seem to fit with the rest of the data results. It's so far out, and we can call it an outlier. All right, everyone understand that? Let's take this information and represent it in a box plot. So first off we need to set up a scale. Let's evenly space out of the values and we treat it like a ruler to measure the data. Okay. Once we've set up our scale we're going to now um, put in our five number summary. So first Step four, before we do that, there's one important thing that we forgot to do, and we've got to do this first, is part of that five number summary is knowing what the maximum is. However, we've got this 93, this, old, this maximum, has been declared an outlier, and it's no longer going to belong. So it's not part of the main set of data anymore. So we need to find a new maximum or it could be a new minimum if it was on the other side of the lower fence. So let's go ahead and find this new maximum. For basically you treat the first number that's inside the fence, that's this one, the 46, that first number inside the fence, that's going to be your new maximum. Okay? So, important thing to remember, your new maximum is the first number inside the fence. So it's going to be that 46. Let's put them in. So, first let's put in our minimum, our 29. 
So 29 is about there on the scale. And then we have our median value. Oh, no, next is our lower quartile, 35. So 35 fits there. Next is the median of 41, which is about there. And then your upper quartile, okay, it's 46, which is about there, okay. And then the new maximum is also 46. And because it's the same as the upper quartile, we don't need to include it. So we just stop there, all right. And we draw our box. So there's the whisker. And there's the lower quartile, the median, and the upper quartile, and that creates the box. And finally, we have our very last point, and that's our outlier, way up here. And the outlier is just shown as a dot or a cross on that data position. And there we have it. We've produced a dot plot of the data showing outliers. Thank you for watching.